Be sure to look for the answers to the following questions. In which layer of the atmosphere is the ionosphere? What is a coronal mass ejection? What is space weather? Explain a solar cycle. When you see this icon, the answer is near. But, uh, this, uh, <laughs> I'm still not sure about this. Come on, it's easy. We find a good hiding spot, note the location using our GPS, put the location on the internet, and our assignment is complete. I already anticipate a good grade. I'm not talking about the assignment. I'm talking about our problem. I've got a new hypothesis. A solar flare occurred during our first attempt at geocaching. Now there is no solar flare, so we aren't getting any technical interference. Well, I agree we aren't receiving any interference, but we still need to confirm our hypothesis. No problem. What do you mean, no problem? Geo Eagle 1 to home base. Come in, please. Hi, Jacob. We're all set. We should have the results in a few minutes. Jacob, what's going on? I knew you wouldn't just accept my hypothesis, so I did some more research. I set up an interview between RJ, Kaylee, and Dr. Sten Odenwald, a NASA researcher who's also over in Norway. Jacob, you're making real progress. You recognize the problem, conducted solid research, and you're working to verify your hypothesis. I'm impressed. If you think that's impressive, wait till you hear from Dr. Odenwald. Home base, let me know the minute you finish talking to Dr. Odenwald. Home base? Home base? Jacob, come in. We're getting ready to talk to Dr. Odenwald. Do you have any additional questions? Over. Over. Well, that's funny. It was working just fine a second ago. Yeah, it's really strange. Maybe there's been another solar flare that's affected the radio and the GPS. Poor Jacob and Bianca. Oh, look, here he is now. Hi, Dr. Odenwald. Hi, kids. Jacob's been telling me about his hypothesis and the research you've been doing. Sounds very interesting. Yes, it is. Of course, it'll be even more exciting if the hypothesis is correct. Right. We are hoping you could help us. Jacob believes that a solar flare is responsible for the technical glitch with our GPS, but we're not sure how. Well, solar flares are one possibility, of course. Uh, when we're talking about the sun and solar flares, we're, we're talking about a huge amount of energy. And that energy caused our GPS a malfunction? It could have. Let's start at the beginning. Solar flares happen near the surface of the sun because the magnetic fields there that are all tangled up try to get untangled into simpler shapes, and that releases a huge amount of energy. Sometimes it can heat the surface all the way up to 100 million degrees. That's incredibly hot. It really is. The gases near the flare are so hot that they produce X-ray light, and this light travels to the Earth in about eight and a half minutes and impacts the Earth's atmosphere. Wow, that's quick. And when the X-rays arrive, they disrupt the ionosphere on the daytime side of the Earth. We learned that the ionosphere is part of the thermosphere, where there are a lot of charged particles and free electrons. That's right, and these disruptions can cause shortwave radio blackouts that last for hours. We also learned that GPS communicates using radio waves. And because solar flares affect radio waves, Jacob's hypothesis is right. Well, again, solar flares are only one possibility. You could also have coronal mass ejections and super flares. What are coronal mass ejections? Well, during some of the largest solar flares, the same magnetic changes that produce the flare can actually launch a billion ton cloud of charged particles into space. These are called coronal mass ejections, or CMEs. Do these clouds affect radio waves? Oh, yes, they can. They also produce some of the most intense and widespread aurora. The thing is that they travel to the Earth much slower than the X-rays do from typical solar flares. It usually takes about one to four days for a CME to arrive at the Earth. What is a super flare? Well, fortunately for us, super flares are not very common. When they happen, though, they produce an amazing amount of energy. How would a super flare affect the Earth? Well, if you're an astronaut in space, a super flare could produce a life-threatening dose of radiation. Historical record also shows that some of the most powerful flares we've seen so far can produce satellite damage or loss of function. Then our GPS really wouldn't work. Well, that's right. Even the CME from a modest super flare like the one in 1989 caused a blackout in Quebec. Wow, radiation, power shortages, these super flares sound extreme. It's easy to see how something as strong as a super flare would have an effect on our GPS. But what effect would an average solar flare have? 
Well, space weather includes all solar flares, CMEs, and super flares can disturb the ionosphere. These disturbances slow down the speed of the radio signal sent to the Earth from the GPS satellite, and the speed can vary from minute to minute. And if the signal takes longer to get to Earth, then our GPS receiver will think that the satellite is further away and get the wrong position. Because the speed changes from minute to minute, the GPS location varies as well. That's exactly what happened to us. What we need is some way to predict space weather. And then we would know the best time to geocache. And we'd be able to better protect and prepare our astronauts in space. Well, that's right. NASA has been working for years to understand the complex relationship between the Earth and the Sun using sophisticated satellite systems such as ACE and SOHO. We also work with the image and time satellite systems and sounding rockets launched here in Norway to study auroras and how electrons and auroral particles flow. So NASA is at work all around the world. That's right, and we work with uh, communities of scientists and researchers all around the world to try to understand how space weather affects the Earth. Thanks, Dr. Unwall. You may have actually helped support Jacob's hypothesis. And solve our problem with our walkie-talkies. Did you say walkie-talkies? Yes. We lost our radio signal with Jacob just before we called you. There must have been another solar flare that affected both the walkie-talkies and the GPS because they both use radio waves. Yeah, but walkie-talkies don't usually use radio waves to travel up to the ionosphere and then back down. They usually use what's called a ground wave, which is basically line of sight between the receiver and the transmitter. Oh no, our hypothesis is incorrect. What do we do now? Well, don't panic. You did use careful reasoning after all, and your basic hypothesis about the GPS problem could still be correct. You just have to do more research. Perhaps there's a way for us to find out if we had any solar activity on the first day of our problem and today. Ah, I think you're onto something. I've got a friend at NOAA who might be able to help. I'll give you his email address. But what about our walkie-talkie problem? Well, walkie-talkies might require a completely separate hypothesis. Think about a common problem that affects small electronic devices when they're in the field. What would that be? Uh, how about bad batteries? Take care, kids. Good luck.